TMZ TV. Uh, I was asked a question during a break that somebody asked me asked me privately. Uh, it has to do with SEX. Is everybody okay with this? You win his hand. Yeah. There was a. <laughs> remember that. <laughs> It's Saturday night. This is why well, this is now. This is why I wanted to come back so we can talk about this stuff. Now it's, it's almost like we can just loosen up a little bit. But um, no, uh, the question was: someone's daughter had a. Friend, I'm just I'm paraphrasing the, the situation. But a friend has a friend who's a, a female who is in a relationship with another female, and she was asked to help this person with a marriage. Two women getting married. Okay, and she wasn't. She knew that if she helped this person, there would be consequences from her religious friends or her mother, her religious mother. You're not actually going to help this sinner who wants to marry a, another woman. Now, what's the deal on that? I'll just say it briefly. You probably heard me teach on this before. It's a important question because people are many people have written me concerning this. Gay men, gay women. Who the word gay, by the way, is not in the scriptures. The word homosexual is not in the scriptures. Don't assume yet what I'm saying, but I'm just telling you. Um, but people of, of that ilk have written me because they feel condemned. Their whole life they've been condemned by religion. You're going to hell. It's the worst sin in the world to be attracted to a member of the opposite sex. It's pretty cut and dry. Um, most of the sexual sins, I'm going to put this in a nutshell. Almost all the sexual sins listed in Leviticus chapter 20, if you want to know what the sexual sins are, read Leviticus chapter 20. If it's there, it's a sexual sin. If it's not there, it's not a sexual sin. Pretty cut and dry. Most of them have to do with penetration, with the male member penetrating. Um, and the scripture is definitely against men lying with men as they lie with women. That's a penetration issue. But if you're reading Leviticus chapter 20 and you're going through the catalog of of sexual sins, there's one thing that's mysteriously absent. I could go there. Right where it should be, there is nothing condemning women lying with women. It's right where it should come, right after the men, it should be the statement about the women, but there's not. There's one big sexual sin with the women, and that is women having intercourse with animals, called bestiality, of course, and that's forbidden by God, and if it ever happened, the woman was stoned and the animal was stoned. What is involved there? Penetration. That's what's involved there. Uh, but the thing with women is there's no penetration. And no, artificial implements don't count. So, you remember when Paul talks about a woman's hair and he says, nature itself teaches you that a woman having tresses is a glory to her, right? But a man with long hair is a shame to him. Paul doesn't quote scripture. I, I don't forget where, the, where this passage is, but you're aware of it. He says, nature itself teaches you this. In other words, you just know that you know that a woman with long hair is beautiful, and a man with long hair is weird. You just know it. There's no, there's no scripture quoted. I say to you, nature itself teaches you that two girls combing each other's hair, two 11-year-old girls, Combing each other's hair is cute. It's adorable. Oh, Martin, the two girls, they were combing each other's hair. It was so nice. Oh, did you see the boys combing each other? Oh, that's gross. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> Nature itself tells you that two girls playing with is lovely. Two boys, two 11-year-old boys combing each other's hair? Ah, uh, that's weird. I don't have a scripture for you. Yeah, stop that. <laughs> But the girls, oh, that's so cute. Oh, But the boys, stop that. Go to your rooms. Oh, my God. Creep. Nature itself tells you that. Nature itself tells you that. The same thing with, you know, women dance at weddings together all the time. You know, it's just, it's nice. It's lovely. It's two men dancing at a wedding together? That tells you something. Nature itself tells you this. Nature itself tells you this. It's much more natural to see intimacy between women than it is intimacy between men. And even God recognizes this because even in the toughest law of the land, the law of Moses, women who were lying with women were not stoned. They were not condemned. In fact, there's not a word of it in the scripture. 
You, well, wait a minute, what about Romans? Ha ha, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that. Not a word of it in, in the scripture. Why? Because it's not unnatural. It is not unnatural. Now, if a male, if anybody watching this video has an issue, there's men who have an issue, I have this to say, is that I don't, I don't have this issue myself, but I know that sometimes men are attracted to other men. And, you know, uh, back in the day it was more acceptable for men to show fondness for one another. Even in some countries today, men kiss each other on the cheek. Clyde would do this. Clyde would come up to me and he would give me a big hug and he would kiss me on the neck. And Paul says, greet one another with a holy kiss. And it was a holy kiss. It was a, it was a sign of affection. And I grew to like it. It was really, it was, it was nice. It was a holy kiss. It wasn't a sexual kiss. Uh, it's not. But I know that there are men who have desires for each other. And scripture is silent about intimacies shared men with men until the point comes where the the man puts that in there. That's the penetration, isn't it? And that's the sin. Does that mean these people are condemned and they're going to hell forever? No. But if somebody asks me, Mon, should I do this? No, don't do it. Don't put that in there. I tell men, I tell men who, I, 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 I tell this to men. I said, okay, look, if you have to be affectionate with this guy, you know, just don't tell me about it, okay? But, you know, if you have to do it, do it. But, don't put that in there. You don't have to put that in there. Put it somewhere else. Just don't do it. But I have to do it. No, you don't. You don't have to do that. Just stop it. If you have to kiss the guy, just don't. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it. But don't put that. Just, just don't do that. You don't have to do this. It's ridiculous. It's, it's a sin. It's gross. It's obscene. Don't do it. That's what I tell him. You know, but God doesn't condemn intimacy. Like I said, back in the day, it was common for men to show intimacy. In fact, I read a, a, uh, Abraham Lincoln stayed in a room. He rented a room with uh, Herndon. I think Herndon, they, they were both lawyers, and they were uh, practicing together in uh, Springfield, Illinois, and, and they both slept in the same bed. And, and back in that, a certain day, that was acceptable, men, men to sleep together. I'm not into it. But I mean, when my son and I visited China, they, my son Paul and I, they put us in, they had, we had this great room, but there was only one bed. And I thought, well, I've never slept with my son, but, you know, it was a giant bed. So we slept together. You know, it, it, it was no big deal. But, um, you know, when it comes to the sexual sin, the sexual sin, most of them are involve penetration. Now, the big objection to this is, oh, Martin, you're all wrong about this. Even though, okay, Leviticus 20 doesn't say anything about women with women, but you can't get out of this one, Martin. You can't get out of this one. Romans 1, verse 24, talking about those who do not honor God as God. Wherefore, God gives them over in their lust, the lust of their hearts, to the uncleanness of dishonoring their bodies among themselves, those who alter the truth of God into the lie and are venerated and offer divine service to the creature rather than the creator who is blessed for the eons. Therefore, God gives them over to dishonorable passions. Here it comes. Wait for it. I'm in verse 26 of Romans 1. For their females, besides, this is a concordant literal New Testament. It's an accurate translation. Listen to what is said about the females. And then you're going to listen to what's said about the males. Here we go. For their females, besides, alter the natural use into that which is beside nature. The females alter the natural use. If I can insert a phrase there, I would say Oxford, the natural use of the female parts. Into that which is beside nature. Okay? Bookmark that. Now listen to what Paul says about the men. Likewise, also, the men, besides... In other words, the men are doing something different. The men, besides leaving the natural use of the female, were inflamed in their craving for one another, males with males, effecting indecency and getting back in themselves the retribution of their deception, which must be. You 
You notice different wording here? The scripture is very specific. What does it say? When it says the men is specific, men who are inflamed in their craving for one another, males with males, effecting indecency, and we know what that is from Leviticus chapter 20, it's penetration and getting back in themselves the retribution of their deception, i.e. disease and death. But the women, notice the difference, their females alter the natural use into that which is beside nature. Hmm. Could have easily used the same wording as males with males. Could have said females with females. Couldn't have. Easy enough. But what does Paul say? Alter the natural use into that which is beside nature. What's Paul talking about? Bestiality. The same sin that he was talked about in Leviticus chapter 20. Altering the natural use of the female part and allowing an animal to penetrate it. That's the sin here. But Paul doesn't get that graphic about it. But they alter the natural use into that which is beside nature. I dare anybody to read into this passage, woman with woman. It's not here. People impose that on the verse because they go, they go to the next verse and they say, well, you see here it says here, males with males, effecting indecency, craving one another. So that's also what he means in the, the previous verse. No, it's not. Otherwise, he would have said it. He said, alter the natural use. And again, I call upon nature. I call upon the witness of nature itself telling you that it's more natural for women to show affection to each other than it is for men. And in either case, there's no condemnation. I'm not here condemning, condemning gay people. I just, they're, you know, I just tell the men like I just told you, but um, there's no condemnation. I mean, the, for any member of the body of Christ who is what we would call a homosexual, God is not, it's not the Aeonian sin. It's not the unforgivable sin. It's just, you know, I mean, women with women, I, there's nothing against it. God is silent, so I'm silent. I don't recommend it. I don't, I'm not against it. It's natural. Men with men, you know, just don't do that, like I said. Now, concerning marriage, I'll, I'll, I'll say this concerning marriage. I think it's ridiculous that women would marry women and men would marry men. It's absurd. That's not marriage. I don't even believe that men and women should get married according to the law. I don't even believe that, I mean, the, the state should not be a third party in anyone's relationship. The state has imposed itself into marriage, just as the Catholic Church has imposed itself into marriage. You can't get married without us. We're the third party. That's what the Catholic Church says. You need a, marriage is a sacrament and you need a license. That's BS. But the state does the same thing. I'm the third party in your marriage. It's John, Mary, and the state. And you live by the state, you die by the state. Believe me. So I think, I think even legal marriage between men and women is ridiculous. If you love somebody and you want to be committed to them, then commit yourself to one another. Affirm your love, and boom, you're married. Speak it into existence. You're married before God. Keep the state out of it. That's my recommendation for anyone. The only reason that these men want to marry men and women want to marry women is because they get benefits from the state. That's all it is. It's a, it's a legal transaction that gives you certain state benefits, beneficiaries, life insurance, whatever, health. It's just it's a practical thing. It's absurd. It's absurd. There's no scriptural precedent for men marrying men and women marrying women. I mean, if they want to do it for legal reasons, you know, whatever. But it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't recommend it. I don't even recommend it for men and women, like I said. So People can be friends. Just You want to live with somebody? Be friends. You can be platonic friends or you can be intimate friends with a member of the opposite sex. Uh, so anyway, that's my, that will help the person who asked, asked the question, I hope. that. Um, and I, I'm some solid scripture ground here. This is a side issue, but uh, you wondered about why these men had hundreds of wives. Solomon, 500 wives and 500 concubines. Concubines were not wives. That's why you see wives and concubines. If the concubines were wives, it would just say wives. A concubine was a woman who didn't have the privileges of a marriage, but they were in the household and they were available for sexual uh, intimacy or they were helpers in the house. They were like 
a maid, like Sarah's maid was a concubine, I believe. So let me ask you this. How often could 500 wives get into Solomon's chamber? Once every couple of years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would like to have that problem, you know. But uh, <laughs> So what, what, what do you think these women... <laughs> Waylon, shake his head. Sorry, Waylon. <laughs> well, what do you think these women? What do you think these women did while they were not in with the king? Did they just suffer? And say, oh, 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 I want to be with the king. Hell no. Spent his gold. What? Spent his gold. Yeah. So they were, they were enjoying each other's company. Let's say they were enjoying each other's company. It's just like so obvious to me. I mean, we, we can't, I would love to have a telescope. I would love to have, see what was going on there. I mean, not for any voyeuristic purposes, just for scholarship reasons. <laughs> Pure scholarship. No, no, no. I, I just want to, I, I, I'm sure this is so. And this is one of the reasons why God has no problem, no issue with women lying with women. They can't penetrate each other. It's that simple. Again, I dare you to find it in Leviticus chapter 20 where every single sexual sin is mentioned. It's absent. It's like, did somebody cut a verse out? Right where it should be, it's not. Read it for yourselves. It's fascinating. Uh, Leviticus chapter 20. And then it's corroborated here in Romans 1. The big sin with women was bestiality. Adultery is a sin. A man is not to steal another man's wife. Adultery, by the way, is a sin of stealing, not a sin of sex. God has less problems with sex than you would imagine. I will repeat this. Adultery is a sin of stealing another man's wife. It's not a matter of sex. So, it's a sin. If a woman committed adultery, if a man committed, if a woman committed adultery with a man, they were both stoned in the law of Moses. God don't like that. We had a comment from the gallery over there, wasn't it? No, I said he didn't like temple prostitutes either. He didn't like temple prostitutes. Yeah, there were two different Hebrew words for, there were two kinds of prostitutes in Israel. I don't, I can't think of the words right. One is Zona. Zona is a Hebrew word, I think, for, for, for a regular prostitute. And then there's a cult prostitute, which is a woman. I mean, this was an ingenious idea by the pagans. They said, wow, I know what we'll do. Sex is so popular and the We'll use sex to advertise our foreign gods. We'll, we'll, we'll get people to worship our foreign gods by initiating them through the rite of sexual intercourse. And so they, they had temple prostitutes. They had these women who would advertise outside the temples, and they would use that intercourse to unite the men with their gods. It was God-hated idolatry. That was a sin of idolatry. So they were temple prostitutes, separate Hebrew word for a temple prostitute and a regular prostitute. So a woman giving sex for money is not prohibited in the Bible. It's not your most noble occupation, but it's not prohibited. I, why would it be? I mean, it's just, what do you do when you have a sore back? You go to the chiropractor. <laughs> right? What do you do when your tooth hurts? You go to the dentist. What do some men do when they can't get a woman to like them? Well, they go pay for sex. You know, it's just a Supply and demand. You know, so it's, I, I'm, I, I personally, uh, I'm causing problems for myself here. I don't know why prostitution wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be legal. It's legal in one county in Nevada. Nye County, Nevada is the only place, to my knowledge, in the U.S. where prostitution is legal. You know, we pro can you believe there was a time in the United States history where they outlawed alcohol? Alcohol was against the law during, during the prohibition in the 20s. It seems crazy to us now. But you know what that created? A black market for alcohol. And there are crime syndicates running alcohol. So, you know, it, it's the crime aspect. It, it's the underground criminal activity that's produced when you outlaw natural things, you know. People can say the same thing about weed, you know. Like, why doesn't it just legalize marijuana? It's a plant, for God's sake. You know, it's, it's a good question, really take away a lot of the crime out of it. So you will find Clyde Pilkington is an amazing book. I recommend you all read it. It's called Do Benevolence, and you'll find it at uh, studyshelf.com. It's one of the most amazing books you'll ever read. So many, uh, there's a revelation on every page concerning sex. 
Stuff that you couldn't imagine. God is much more liberal, much happier about sex than Western culture is, especially. We're so prudish in Western culture. Christians invent so many sexual sins. In fact, you've probably heard me say this. Satan has so preoccupied Christianity with a false enemy. He has them fighting sex. That's the new thing, is to fight sex. In the meantime, he's working the greatest evil ever worked upon humanity through their, through their hands, eternal torment. Isaiah says, woe to those who call good evil and evil good. Christians call sex evil and eternal torment good. And they're working like crazy, stamping out sex. No more pornography, no more pictures of uh, scantily dressed women. But yes, eternal torment. Oh, we're preaching a God who's going to burn you for, in hell for eternity if you don't love him. But oh no, we can't show Janet Jackson's nipple for one-eighth of a second on the Super Bowl. What the hell are people afraid of? See this evil thing. Oh my gosh. My kids are ruined for life. But I take them to church every day, and they hear about the God of eternal torment. But oh my God, don't look at that woman's breast. Jesus. It's on for one-eighth of a second, and the country goes apoplectic. During the Super Bowl, you know, the wardrobe malfunctions. What the hell's become of this? So ridiculous. Peter, th those guys fished naked. People were, you know, and the, the Romans bathed naked. The Olympians back in that day competed naked. People, were, people had no problem with the human body. It's beautiful. God made it. If I show a body on my show or something, oh, Martin showed a woman in a bikini. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, what would you rather do? What, what would you rather see? Death, destruction, war, somebody decapitated. You know, I mean, these people that are these people that are hating this. I'm sure their kids are playing video games. You know, killing people, <laughs> blood splattering. That's fine, but don't, don't 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 show a human body. Oh my God, God made it. What's a what's a hang up? Frustrating. That's just ridiculous. Now I talk about this. I get in trouble every time, but I don't care because for every one person I offend, ten people go, Oh, I got to watch this guy more often. It's got to make sense for a living. Whoa. I vented there, man. I'm always fired up about that topic. It just ticks me off. Christians will screw up everything. There's nothing they don't fuck up. Nothing. They, everything that makes people happy, they're against. Everything. Alcohol, cigarettes, sex, movies, sex, drugs, rock and roll. I mean, they're against everything. Idiots. And then the thing that's really horrible, they promote all day. Eternal torment. What the hell's the matter with these people? They're sick. They're demented. They're perverted. They call us the perverts. They're the perverts. They're the perverts. What point of me when you say that? Hmm? What point of me when you say that? Oh, I said, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's like, who's perverted here? I don't know if you know, in, in, in my book, Flawed by Design, this is one of my favorite books. If you read it, there's an account here. It's a fictional account, but the, the woman, Mary, who weeps at Jesus' feet, she's a prostitute, and she's... I wrote in here, I, I wonder, well, what happened before? What drove her to the Lord's feet? So I have a fictional section in here right at, at the beginning that moves me every time. It's like she's, she's protesting against what God made her. You made me this way, God. And in this scene, she, like, she takes off her tunic and she flashes her breast before God. And she said, this is what you made me. This is what you made me. And she's like waiting for God to strike her down. And he ends up showing love and grace to her. And you know what? Some people can't get over the fact that I used the word breasts in this book. Martin, I couldn't read that book. Why? I saw the word breasts in there. I'm not kidding you. More than one person ha has said this. And I said, who's obsessed? Who's obsessed with breasts, me or them? I wrote one sentence and moved on. Then I wrote the rest of the book. After I mentioned her breast, then I, I, then, then I wrote the rest of the book. They can't move on. Who's, the, who's obsessed? Jeez. They are obsessed with it. They're obsessed with it. They can't get over it. They cannot get over it. They, they call it much. A anyway. Anyone want to go out and have a smoke? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I tell you what we're going to do. Tomorrow we'll be come back here at uh, nine. nine. Let's go make it nine. But it'll be a it'll be a it, it'll be a loose start, you know. Nine nine thirty. I hate to tell you we're going to start at nine thirty because. Yeah, don't tell me nine. Sorry, nine thirty. Tell me nine thirty, and I'll be here then. <laughs> <laughs> There's one in every crowd. <laughs> now you've complicated the whole thing. No, I don't. All right. No. Okay. Be here at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. <laughs>
<laughs> Wait a minute. Be here nine o'clock, and you know, well, well, well this morning, what, what did we do this morning? We got a little bit of a late start, but it's loosey goosey. Yes, we're done. Thank you very much.